Ten years ago, on January the 6th, our daughter was murdered in our home. She was 18. Her name was Jennifer. It was a horrible act of violence. She'd been shot. She had been shot in the head. Our lives changed horribly from that time on. Your mother, you know, she has a sweet tooth. Oh, does she? So, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. After our tragedy, it left us with just uh, Brian and me and Mason to uh, put the family back together as best we could. But that was a pretty difficult task, given the fact that Mason was 20 at the time. And yeah. after the murder of Jennifer, he was arrested and tried and found guilty of murdering oh, his sister. Jennifer had sustained three gunshot wounds to the right side of her head, from the temple over the right ear, and she sustained two gunshot wounds to the chest area, in and around the area of the heart. And, and those were the, uh, that was the cause of death. She screamed and screamed, and there's blood in this, and there's a trail down the, down the uh, basement steps. So I went down the basement, and that's when I saw Jennifer. Don't use your fingers. Don't use your fingers. Get your finger out of there. Did you wash your hands? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> there you go. Is this a two-person operation? This is a two-person operation. Absolutely. Because they're, they're defrosted. From the time of the crime, through to the time of our first family visit, we had never been alone without supervision. They did not want us to have a visit with the three of us at all. They said, we don't want to give you um, private family visits because we view you as a risk to your parents or possibly your parents as a risk to you. Mom, do you want to turn on the oven? For the French, French fries? fries. Mm -hmm. so. One of the concerns was the length of time we would be alone with Mason when, um, when we made a visit. And that means that we're 72 hours unsupervised. Uh, it would be just Brian and myself and Mason. Just use a they call on the phone three to four times a day to have everyone show their face at the door. But other than that, we're alone. We're all alone. So there is knives here and I think that their fear was that if they allowed a private family visit and I did murder or, or hurt my parents, um, that they would be held liable for that. I gotta get that. Okay, you have to do a visual on everybody? All right, thank you. Um, there's a count, there's an officer and he's asked that we step out for a visual yeah, inspection. Did you, yeah. did you get everybody? Uh, uh, <laughs> All righty, thank you. Right from the beginning, he was adamant that uh, somebody else had committed this murder and, and that he was an innocent victim. To the best of my knowledge, to this day, he still uh, maintains his innocence with regards to the death of Jennifer Jenkins. It should have been me. He never did anything to me. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
been shot as well. He may have been shot and been able to make it to the backyard or a neighbor's yard or in a bush somewhere. And we didn't know where Mason was. So you're saying that on the night of the murder, he actually fled from the police on horseback? Correct. I went to my cousin's house, and so I saddled her horse. But I wasn't really trying to hide, and I wasn't really trying to, to get away. You know, when you ride, ride a 1,200-pound animal through the middle of the city, across three or four major intersections, you're not really trying to hide. The death of Jennifer, you know, occurred sometime between 4 in the afternoon and basically 5.10 p.m. Uh, we needed to get as much information as possible as soon as possible. You okay, Brian? Yeah. My first interview with Brian was approximately 7.30 p.m., that was, you know, two hours, two and a half hours from the incident. Camera up there? Yes. No, I, I know this is difficult for you. Do you remember what she was wearing when you went downstairs? Well, that's it. Like she had, a, well, she had a pair of slacks on. She was fully, but everything else was blood. to the end of our street and I wanted to make sure my parents were okay. I decided to go from there because all the police cars and stuff were still there. I just needed time to think. He's always been in trouble, um, but it had never, ever been um, anything violent like this. He had, he had stolen cars, and he had been robbery and things like that. He had never assaulted anyone. We just couldn't believe that um, Mason could do such a thing. The violence part, Leslie and I are drilling them, going over and over and over. The violence part has never been violence. Never, ever, ever. And even him. Like the violence has been behind the wheel on escapes and different things, but no violence. I ended up taking a vehicle later on. About an hour later, the police um, came and arrested me. I was young and I'd never been through interrogation or anything like that before. How are you doing? Not good. I really want to be with my family. I know. I know. This is not an easy time. No, no. <laughs> 
During the course of that interview, Mason provided me with a version of events which basically consisted of um, he saw a white van pull into his driveway, um, four males came out of the van, two of them had weapons, all four entered his, uh, his residence. There were four other people involved. And basically the four, these four bad guys, uh, take Mason away and kidnap him. Two of the people were carrying guns on them, I don't know what kind. When they came to the front door, I fired my gun. I didn't hit them. They came upstairs, and when you have two guns pointed at you and nothing left, they took my gun. We had some concern with that story. It, 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 uh, frankly didn't have uh, a ring of truth to it. Clearly we believe at this point that Mason is responsible for Jennifer's death. <laughs> we wonder why. Mm -hmm. We believe that Mason is responsible for Jennifer's death. Yes. You're trying to support your children, and you have two children. One is dead. The other one is accused and tried of murdering that child. So that in itself tears you between children that you raised and that loved each other. And it was just a horrendous spot to be. My perception is that he really, truly loved her. I'm not defending this no, no. gun. I know. I'm not, but also, too, like, he's, he's got the record, but no record of violence. This is the sister that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're sick. And there's no problem with them, other than just normal brother and sister shit. He, he was not a violent person, so we would have no reason to suspect that he would do this horrendous thing. Brian and Leslie chose to support Mason. We decided as a family that we were going to support Brian and Leslie. have a call from Mason and he claimed that he was innocent and at that point it was we can't deal with this whether you're innocent or not we just have to wait because at that point we were also trying to deal with the death of Jennifer and the arrangements and making a you know a funeral and a tribute to to her while we're still being questioned by the police Most families who have lost a child are allowed to grieve. We weren't allowed to grieve because the police repeatedly called us in for questioning. What was worse, the police wanted us to say things that would help them convict our son. That's a horrible thing for a parent. But there's only so much. Right now, um, we're dealing with what we got to deal with. And Absolutely. If you don't have to tell me, I know it's not pretty, okay? Mm -hmm. But right now we sort of need to keep Jennifer pretty. Absolutely. Okay. Brian said to me, 
I'm trying to, I'm racking my brains trying to understand why. And I'm trying to keep people from asking that and question at this particular And Brian time. says to me, and my wife tells me, right now, we can't worry about why. Mm -hmm. And today, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't. I know. I know. Um, we have to get through this, and, and at this particular point, for you to know, Jennifer was a little perfectionist. So she was going out, things had to be pretty perfect. Mm -hmm. um, she was very slow and methodical, and the hair had to be right. Mm -hmm. It was just, um, mm -hmm. she was a nice kid anyway, but, but the kids called her Pokey, and she had a necklace. Pokey and, uh, uh, in this particular instant, we will not get another chance to, um, to honor her. And it needs to be right. And we don't get to do it again. And I can't, I can't conjure anything else. I know you need to. I know it needs to be done. But I, I can't go there. I know. Okay. I can understand that. He was a cute little kid. He was those those dark brown eyes. They were both cute as buttons when they were little. Boy, he was a cowboy, and yeah, he loved the horses. And Mason was very mischievous. He was always getting into trouble. He would climb out of windows and climb up trees, and he was very adventuresome and. Where Jennifer was, uh, she didn't get into trouble like that. Mason would get in trouble for stealing cars. And oftentimes he would take them, um, have a little joyride, bring them back, fill them with gas, wash them. And if he could put them back in the person's driveway, he would put them back. A lot of criminals come from homes in which there are serious social problems, drugs, alcoholism, and crime, and so on. Was this the case with your family? No, heck no. Uh, we did not partake in drugs or alcoholism or whatever the heck that is. It's Brian. Brian Jenkins calling. Hi. No, yours a valued account of mine. Mm -hmm. and I'm a uh, sales agent. We sell uh, industrial chemical uh, to factories, transportation like is in big commercial fleets. No problem. And uh, appreciate your business. I originally started off as um, going to school to be a public school teacher, and I did that for a while. And then gradually I uh, got into the field of mental health and became a mental health worker. We just were normal folk. We, you know, we don't. Any criminal history? No, none whatsoever. The trial went on for three years. Mason was struggling with the criminal justice system, and we were struggling with a fight just as devastating. After the murder, we knew that we needed to go out and we, knew we needed to be out in public so that we didn't feel ashamed. Acquaintances, good acquaintances or different things would stop dead in their tracks and go the other way. You know, like they see us, you know, uh, 50 feet away, and then whew, 
it's clear they, they went the other way to avoid us, like the plague. Some of the family could escape the stigma. Brian's sisters, for example, they had married names and lived out of the city, so no one knew that they were connected to the case. Who's that? Somebody ringing the bell? Yes. Oh, look at them. Hey. Hello. How are you? Hi, honey. Come on in. Here's to the clan. Have you seen Brian? It's a terrible secret, and because I don't live in Chatham, and because I'm not a Jenkins, people do not associate any of the crime with me, so I've been able to, to sort of hide. You know what, one night I was out here and I saw something move at the My two little girls, they don't even know. My husband's family don't know, but how do I tell them? What are they going to think about me and my family? because sometimes people can be cruel and they can be very judgmental. <laughs> For Brian and I, in Chatham, there was no escape. We sort of are imprisoned because we, um, we can't get out of this life. In a way, it's a life sentence for us too. Jennifer was murdered in this chair. The chair itself was exactly where I'm sitting, right exactly where I'm sitting uh, is, is basically where the, it was a large wing chair and it, it sat right here. Behind me there was a, a coat rack all oh, about three and a half feet high. She was doing what she does is eat popcorn and watch her soap. And the TV was over to the right of the room. And she, she was murdered. And there's people that have approached us. Why in heck would you like to stay in the house of, of, of... Well, that's our home. That's our home. That's all our good feelings and, and things like... We've been here for years, since 1981. And so, never give me a second thought about living anywhere else other than, than just here. Mm. And then in retrospect, of course, it, you know, all the rest of the stuff. We didn't think goes. of selling, but who would want to buy it at that point? We don't need your home anymore after tonight, so we're going to yank our people out of there, mm -hmm. which means it'll be free and clear uh, for you to go in if you, if you wish. What we're hoping and what we prefer, obviously, is that if you let us go in there and do the cleaning up first uh, before you go in there. Um, do you have any problem with that? You haven't done any of this clean up yet. No, and that's why we want you in there. Um, I, I spoke to... Well, maybe we won't want that. Okay, that's not a problem. That was the issue that I was wondering. Um, Maybe we won't want that. You won't want us to clean that for you? That's right. Okay. That's our home. That's true. And uh, if, if in fact, we, we get it back at a time and you haven't cleaned anything up, we got a mess to clean up and we're going to clean it up. And if we have the, the choice to, to do it, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, I know. It, um, Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins. I, I know where you're coming from in kindness and everything. I, 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 that's where I hope you're coming from. Yeah. But you let us decide. Okay. I got some clothes in the I like, I'm the last one to see my daughter. And they could, I gotta, I gotta get back there. Do you understand that? Yeah. So don't you touch a goddamn thing. I don't care if you shit in the place and all over it. It's our home, understand? So don't touch a freaking thing. We might want you, might not, I don't know. But that's our, uh, we gotta, 
we got to grab onto every inch of anything that we got here to keep this thing sane. And the insane thing that it is. So back off. Back off, George. I'm telling you. Oh, Brian. He was just... He's just really suffered and aged and he's lost over a hundred pounds. He's developed uh, diabetes. He used to be so jovial and happy and bubbly and always the joker and you can tell that he really has to try. He wept um, and I remember holding him and him saying, I'll never, I'll never be able to walk my baby down the aisle. And he was just sobbing. He went to prison and the appeals continued on for several more years. From the initial meeting with Mason Jenkins, he adam was adamant he did not kill his sister. There was four men came to the house, they shot her because of some debts he had or something to that effect. And from that point on, he never once changed his story. He was not responsible. He was going to appeal it. He was clearly wrongfully convicted. He was innocent. I'm sorry, but my lawyer didn't have to say too much. I had asked for my lawyer and I had I had on a couple occasions throughout the interview I had said my lawyer doesn't want me to talk to the police. And he just said for a change Mason, keep your mouth shut and let me do something. Because usually I blab and blab and blab and get myself in deeper shit than and then Detective Vieira would come in and he would say, you know, oh, I just talked to your parents or I've been in contact with your parents or, you know, your parents are doing this. So it was like, it, and I wanted to know what they were doing, so it was like almost baiting me to talk. And, you know, I don't know why I have to answer to your mom and dad. I don't know. Your mom and dad. I don't know. Your mom and dad. And your family's pretty concerned about you, too. Your mom and dad. <laughs> My lawyer, he didn't want it admitted as evidence, and so he brought a motion, and the motion wasn't successful, and the interview was admitted into evidence, and it was played at my trial. It was very damaging. Do not believe that there was anybody who showed up at your house. You know, in a van. What are you trying to say? Yeah. Story doesn't make sense. What am I trying to say? You're here. You're charged with murder. murder. Right. I didn't murder anybody. I got no reason to lie to you. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Sure you do. I don't have any you're reason. You're for first degree murder. You have reason to lie. I did. You have motive to lie. I can see that. Yes. Did you hate her that much? I never, no, I didn't hate my sister. Why would I hate my sister? She bent over backwards for me. Yes, she did. She cares more than, you know, Probably ever than anybody. Huh? She had more faith in me than sometimes my parents did. Yep. You know, I ain't got no reason to hate her. I got no reason to blow her fucking head off. You know, I have no reason, you know, whatsoever to do anything like that. I told you she was shot in the head.
So he just said, I'm, I'm guilty. For myself, it was more freeing simply because now he was telling the truth. Brian had put um, much, much more into the belief of innocence for, for yourself, right? I'm yeah, the- although I've already put the closure to admitting to myself that our son did, uh, did uh, kill our sis, our daughter. daughter. And uh, that's good enough for me, and this is as good as it gets for us to move on as a family unit, you know, so. One last thing about this. Do you have any idea why, why he did it? I think it was uh, myself, okay. I think it was just a, uh, a terrible, terrible freaking accident. Come on in, you're out. Uh-huh. We've been waiting for you. Where are you guys? Right here. Well, hello. Oh, hi. Wow. Good to see you. How are you? There's my brother. My little day and night angel for a couple of days. What? I know. Oh, I could just see ya. Have you ever talked about the details of the crime with uh, Mason or with Brian and Leslie? Yeah, no. No. Never? No, we haven't. (laughs) This is um, where we've been recording his blood sugars. Yes. But we've used that. We can't have an honest and sincere real relationship with him or with Brian and Leslie until we're able to talk about things freely. Okay, Brian, it's time for me to go. Yes, go see your son. Give me kisses. Safe trip. Oh, be good. We are not people with guns, and um, we needed to know how the gun got into our house. You know, it was just inconceivable that, that, that this would have been anything but an accident. So just by telling us he's guilty is his first step. And now he needs to start to explain why, what happened, what he was thinking, those kind of things. Um, So they all take time and they will come at his time we try, we are helping him. We have said to him, at this point, we would just like to hear the truth so that we can all live with it and put it behind us. I think we just kept it, you know, he's ours, he's our son, Jennifer's our daughter, and in the family unit, we just, it's time to tell the truth, but we didn't go through the step, step by step. We didn't see the purpose in knowing all the details. There's enough pain to deal with. It sounds terrible, but you know, Jennifer was dead and there isn't much beyond that that can get more horrible and you know, you have to deal with that. Her death and the fact Mason's guilty. How the hell would this happen? And I I couldn't get it, get it around my head that my son would kill our son would kill our daughter. So I, I was on denial until it was proven in my head that in fact he did pull the trigger and he did kill in the form of an accident. Barrier, please. We know the truth. We know he, as he said, he's responsible for it. So. We would like just to put it behind us so we can continue on, not to forget, but just to get this big elephant out of the room, so to speak, just to get it on the table and move past it.
I don't know what people are looking for, what facts, what, you know, why they want to know. My parents know that my sister was shot. My parents are the ones that found my sister. Hello. Oh, hello there, honey. How are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see ya. There you go. Get the formalities out of the way. Get the formalities. Uh, you have a good it. drive? Yes, I did. A good drive. A long drive. Yeah, let's put this here. Suppose you want to uh, pat me down. Good. Thank you. Good to go. Good to go. Mm -hmm. And start lunch now. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm very hungry. <laughs> so, ready to go. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank Enjoy. you. Enjoy. Take care, folks. Yeah. I'll see you later. Okay. Leslie, aside from knowing that uh, Mason did kill her, mm -hmm. do you know anything at all about the events of that evening or what happened or why it happened? We have details. Yeah. I have no idea why he did it. Um, <laughs> he certainly... Um, I have no idea why he did it. Have you ever had a conversation with Mason in the last 10 years or so about what happened that night? No, not about the exact details, and some of it was, some of it was, um, as we said, because of court and the implications for Mason and the case. We know that Jennifer was murdered. We know Mason has told us that he, he murdered Jennifer. So you're saying it was an accident? Yes. Essentially? Is there anything that you want to... Actually, point. we've always said, you know, it's it, it, we it it needed. We felt that it was an accident. We didn't know that. Um, we also thought it was a bit strange that he would leave his sister. We we would have expected a nine one one call. Obviously, I also understand the the panic. Um, we feel badly that he certainly didn't do a nine one one call and. Um, was not able to um, to see his way clear for that. Do you know anything besides that about what happened? Uh, in details at this point, no. We haven't discussed all of we've... Um, but you knew Jennifer was shot. I know Jennifer was shot in multiple times. Yeah. And not you, but you have not, expo you have not provided that explanation as to the details of that. Well. And then you know that we came home to the point that we yeah. came home. You haven't given the details of all of that yeah. to the minute we walked back in the door. Right. Would you be prepared to share those details? Today? I, it, yeah, it, the, from, well, it, yes <laughs> and no. I, I'm prepared to share the details, but it's, it's, it's some of it I've blocked out of my mind as well. So I, 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 I basically what happened was, was I came down the stairs. Um, I had the rifle in the, at the coat rack. Um, I put the rifle on top of the coat rack. Um, the rifle, I hit the rifle and the rifle went forward. When I grabbed the weapon, the weapon went off. And that's, that's the, initial, the initial shot. So um, after that, uh, there was a series of, I checked for um, a pulse. There was no pulse. There was no, she wasn't breathing. She wasn't, I didn't, any of that. Um, and there's things that I, don't want to discuss and there's things that I don't want to, I choose not to remember. So that's it in a nutshell.
I don't believe that he should ever be um, let out of prison. Mason took Jennifer's life, and um, he should pay with his own forever. And 15 years is not the price. Um, or 25 years is, how can you put a price on Jennifer's life? You can't. So he should pay with his own life, and he should be there until he dies. part of Mason Jenkins' case management team, which consists of himself, his parole officer, and myself. So I have a say in decisions regarding his releases, uh, passes, trailer visits, that type of thing. I also do a monthly report on his progress. And I grabbed the gun, and when I grabbed the gun, the gun went off. Then that's when my sister got shot. So she's on the floor. Yeah. And she's clearly, in your mind, she's clearly dead. And she and was in the, in the chair. And, and she's in a chair. Yeah. And then what did you do? That's, that's, that part's hard for me to talk about because I, 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 I started thinking about um, what, what can I do? And then for some reason it's like, I'll make it look like somebody else did it. When I came up with a story, I'm like, well, somebody isn't just going to shoot somebody once. So... That, that was the hardest part. I, I was multiple shots, so, but... When you go to the parole board, you know, they're going to go through step by step, yeah. every little thing. Yeah. And some of it I think they're going to find hard to believe. Yeah. Because, I mean, from what you told me, yeah. your sister and you were really close. Yes. So, for me, if I find it hard to believe that you could just shoot her and then just leave. It, it, I, I was, when I was there... Like I said, I was emotional, I was yeah. upset. Um, I checked for, for vital signs, mm -hmm. I checked, I cried, I did, I, it was emotional. Because mm -hmm. to me, someone who you loved yeah. and your sister who's so close, yeah. to point a gun at her yeah. and shoot her four more Aft times. Afterwards, I know. And then I think, did you move the body and to move her? Yes. He dragged the body. Uh, down uh, into the basement uh, from the living room and you'll see a trail of blood leading from that chair leading to the basement and when you look down uh, there's a runner on the on the stairs going into the basement and you can see blood on the runner going all the way down the horror um, once um, some of the facts were released, and how Jennifer must have suffered. I just, I just wish Mason would have said this at another time. You know, just because Brian has been very, very sick. Is that enough water? <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go see, I don't think you have any aftershave. Brian needs his, his strength and his mind to get better from being sick. Did they, did they really need to know at 11, you know, 10 years later? Because they have. They, they've lost their family. They don't have four, four people sitting around their kitchen table 
you know, have a breakfast or lunch, supper, Christmas time, you know. Nobody sitting around the tree with them. You know, Easter. Maybe Ian can go out dancing now. <laughs> You're all cleaned up. Okay. Why did you hold to the idea of his innocence for such a long time? Because I wanted to believe. Because I wanted to believe that fact. But it, it was truly the understanding of why this would happen, would happen at all, on, on just when it was in, on January 6th, and then Mason and his sister were together in, at Christmas. And the admiration of each other I could stand back Christmas morning and observe that and in, in the and the stuff and then for that to happen like a week later and it just so that stuck in my mind you know how in heck would would that kind of love be a murder thing within a week about it before I was a little confused because one thing that stuck out in my mind is when you said you shot her and you knew she was dead yes. right so why would she be shot four more times if she's dead that was because in my head at that time I, I thought that if there was more th my story was yeah. that there was there was more than one intruder and mm -hmm. and something like that so it would mo look more like a Gang type. So they would all come in, and each one would shoot her. I like four I shots. Four, I, like here, your turn, yeah. your turn, your turn. No, no. I, I don't know, yeah. but I didn't know at the time. Because it sounds weird. I mean, I if, know, if you, yeah. But weird. I'm not thinking at that time. Yeah. S s straight, I guess. It, yeah. I was. I was just um, mixed up. So you thought, okay, I'll. Yeah. Shoot her four times, like uh, four people came in and each took a turn, and then I'll go write a note that they left, that we were here and we shot each no, shot her? Or? No. I don't get that. It wasn't, no, it wasn't like <laughs> yeah. that. It, it was, at that time, it was just like, I wrote the note, but I wanted to deflect the yeah. blame. I'm just saying, like, the pro, yeah. they're going to say, okay, so you shoot her, you shoot her four times, taking the right before people, so each person yeah. might have shot her. Then we're going to be here and we're going to leave a note that we were here and we killed yeah. Jennifer, we killed this person. Yeah. And then I'm going to hide the gun, because I don't yeah. want to have the gun, but I'm going to hide the gun. It seemed rational at the yeah. time and it seemed rational at that moment. But until, until somebody's in that situation, mm -hmm. they, nobody can say what they would necessarily do. Because mm -hmm. they're going to ask you all this. They're going to yeah. say, how does this make any sense? Yeah. It how, doesn't. It, it can't, make, it it can't sounds, make sense. It sounds hard to believe. Yeah. None of it was straight. None of it was, it was just rational. In the panic, all this just it came to panic. mind. Do this, do this, do that. It was Get panic. I'm like, well, if I'm taken away, if I'm taken away, how did I have time to? You know, I even thought about this later on. How did I have time to write a note? So, I, so some things may not not make sense, mm -hmm. but that's the yeah. way it is. That's, I'm just playing, yeah. you know, 
devil's advocate. Because yeah. to, to anybody who would read it would go, what? Not only did he shoot his sister, but he shot her five times. And he shot her with a single shot 22 rifle. He shoots her in the, in the chest, and then he has to stop and reload um, the weapon and shoot her again, and then stop and reload, and again, this time to the head, and then again to the head, and again. Well, you're okay. Sure, with Jennifer Jenkins. Hi, Jen. Hi. Jennifer. She was such a good person. She really was. She, uh, she was a good daughter. She had lots of friends. She was very um, shy, so she would giggle, and, you know, she just had a really sweet way about her. She was so bubbly and everything, and, and this circle of friends just... And she seemed to be the focus, and the, they just came. Jennifer was the magnet of the girls. we decided we were going to go and look for a wedding dress for me. And so she helped me pick out my wedding dress. And that's a, a memory that I'll cherish. Forever. of Jennifer's death, my mom and my dad and I set time aside and um, we make sure that we have contact that day and that we all speak on that day. When it's a nice sunshiny day outside, we'll call it a Jennifer day um, because that's just, she liked that, you know, and that was her spirit. And, you know, although I've been convicted of the murder of my sister, that doesn't change our relationship that we had and that I loved her. Hello. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. Did you do anything special, like, for Jennifer yesterday? Well, uh, the special thing was your mother and I spent the day 
have a meal together, and that was neat. So. No. You sound a little bit whooped. No, I'm not whooped. I'm just. I'm just. I'm here. I'm anxious to get home and get on with it. And uh, no, I'm not. I'm not tired. And the church is coming to pick you up. Yeah. That'll, yeah. That'll Tomorrow. Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's that's one thing that I I all miss is I won't have Jennifer to do those things for me later on. No. No. In life. No. Nope. That's. That's some of the that's some of the stuff I was thinking about yesterday. Right. So it's it gets to you every once in a while, and especially on on that day, especially. Yes. I just I sit in my cell and and I think and. Yep. Yep. I'll miss that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, wow. once it, it was supposed to be like. Like, Mom always said, after you guys are gone, that we'll have each other. And yeah. now I think about, you know, well, when you guys are gone, I won't have anybody. Yeah. So, it's, a, it's a hard, hard pill to swallow. Yeah. So, anyways. <laughs> Here's your mom. You take Sign care. Sign off. Yeah. You too, love son. You. Okay. Love you back. You know that. And we'll be moving forward. There we That's go. Young. Here's your mom. All right. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? All right. I've got the vibe. I was trying to talk a little bit about Jennifer. And he kind of um, just, He seems like a little bit... I said, are you tired? And he's like, no, I'm not tired, but... He seems a little bit... Um, a little bit tired. Withdrawn or... Well, maybe But not. it's a hard time for him too, right? Definitely a hard time and... Um, we're not always talkers. No, we're not always talkers. How do you raise two kids that are so different? They were both taught the same thing. They were both treated the same. Um, there is an indication that Jennifer was sitting in a chair. There's a big indication that Jennifer, I know that. But that's not where she's found. No, it is not. And she was placed where she was found. And we uh, once again ask ourselves why. That's right. And we say to ourselves, not only that, but it was covered up. It was covered up. And that is something that I have. Hitman, hitman that comes to your exactly. house. Exactly. That'll take time to cover it up. And not I, going I to care. And I and I did say that to me. I'm like, not going to care. But, and please don't be offended by this, because we have to look at every possibility. I will, tell, I will tell you, I know because it was after the fact that we saw the chair, that we saw that blanket. Yes. And what an odd picture it makes. If she had been left in the chair. We would have walked in the door and found her. Right away. That's right. And... The person didn't want you to do that. Mm -hmm. The person wanted whoever was coming in that door to keep coming in. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to be the next one in that door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that thought has been there too. And we here, mm -hmm. after talking to Many people, we have many more people to talk to, say to ourselves, one of the possibilities mm -hmm. is that either mom and dad, or just mom, mm -hmm. was also a target. Mm -hmm. Because 
the, the not that I sound cold or callous or no. insensitive. Jennifer is on that carpet for one reason and one reason only, and that is to keep her from being seen by the person that comes in that door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the and that is only the question. reason. Um, you know that we called the Brian's mothers, and we called in fear. You know that. That you called Brian. Well, you know that we said, did Mason do this? If Mason did this, Mason's not here. Where is Mason? What has happened? What terrible thing has happened? Right. We called to Brian's mother thinking, what if he went out there and what if basically we're looking at a madman on a rampage, exactly. all right? Exactly. Um, so this is not bizarre and unnatural. For you it's a thought that's that. crossed your mind as well. My fear... I, I the police just, I suspected that, that his plan was to kill each and every one of us. Um, and I, they came up with that one fairly, and I think fairly quickly, um, when they started their investigation. Um, it, it's not one that we have ever really felt was a valid... It's it's always there. It's, he was never tried. They didn't um, they didn't sentence him. He well, it was in the trial, but he wasn't charged with that. But it seems seems to keep coming back. As you know, the theory of the crown was that Mason intended to murder you as well as your wife, and there are still some concerns that uh, if and when he gets out, he might uh, try to finish the job. Have you no concern about this? No concern whatsoever. No concern, and I don't, uh, I believe my wife has no concern whatsoever about that issue. Our theory in this case is that this was a premeditated murder. On the dining room table, two documents, one page documents, very simplistic, and basically those documents are two wills, and these wills both say, if I die, Everything I have goes to my spouse. And if we should both die, then everything that we have goes to our son. What do you read from that? What, what, what do you think that says? Basically. I don't know. It's a, it's a testament, it's a will and testament from me, which is totally not right. It's not from me. I didn't write this piece of garbage, and that's not my signature. I leave all property and possessions to my son, Mason J. Jenkins, and appoint him executor. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. That's a bunch of shit. So, that's what I think of that. And that caused us, you know, some concern and provided us what, what we thought was possibly a motive. I, I'm, not, I'm not really certain what made um, the police believe that. I, to this day, I, I, I don't understand. The will. I'm not really clear on the will. Mason will have to explain more of that. He wrote a will for us because we didn't have a will. So in his writing of that will... I don't know what did you do with it. No, it, it was, and that's that's where I come into being confused about why they would leap to that con conclusion. There was, we had had talks about um, insurance mm -hmm. and things like that, and my parents had had often said that they would um, they would have to get a will. Yeah. But in mm -hmm. the circumstance of you come home and you find that Jennifer is dead, and there are wills written. Um, they have yeah. to assume something, and I think that's what police do, is go ahead and put, put a plot together. I think that what they found odd was that everything was to be left to me. You know, it, it wasn't that I was to get everything myself. It was I was to get it in trust of my younger sister. But you my, didn't write that. come up with a story, a lie, of what I was going to tell to the police and what I was going to tell to make this whole thing um, believable and, and 
so throughout the interview, I, I was I was telling lies. I went upstairs and I grabbed my gun because I could see when they're getting getting out of their van that they had guns. The two guys had guns. Can you give me an example of some of the lies that you told in the interview? Oh, there's. There's, there's so many. It'd be easier. It would be easier to tell the what's true. Almost everything that I told him was a lie. Two guys went downstairs, and I just said, "Me and my sister, oh, I'll go with you." And all the guys went downstairs. No. My parents have said to me, um, "We've had children to to love and to raise, not to throw away, and we'll be there for you no matter what." But in the back of my mind, I, I, I'm like, if I admit that, that I murdered my sister, will they still be there for me? And um, that's, that's something I've struggled with and, and sort of at different stages I've, I've told a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And, you know, as a liar, it's hard for me to tell the truth. And then on top of it, I might lose the only support that I have left because my parents are the only support I have left, so. So there still is some truth to come out about what you yeah, did? Yeah, there is truth to come out. You still haven't told the whole truth about the murder? No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always the first couple yeah. minutes seems yeah. to be hard to talk for some reason. I don't know why. So. Well, there was some stuff that sounded a little bit yeah. hard to believe. So why don't we start over? Well, what, what happened? Like, yeah, it's not... When I, when I got out of prison the last time, mm -hmm. I came back to my family at Christmas time. Right. So that whole time was a confusing... Um, period of time in my life for me because it's Christmas time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressures from family members and there was a lot of questions in my mind of, you know, certain things were going to be successful or certain people I saw mm -hmm. were being successful and I wasn't achieving what I wanted to achieve. So in my mind, and, and it's hard for me to talk about it now because in my mind, I thought about, and I, <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I did think about um, killing my parents. That was, that was a thought. You thought about actually? Yeah. Really? And that's, I don't, it was, it was something in my head that that seemed like it was the only alternative for, for money at the time, or it was, it was just like a, at a very confusing time if I do this, I'll right. get the money and then I'll get the respect right. and then, you know, things will sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it and I, I, I thought about it. I planned it. Mm -hmm. It was, and nothing with my sister though. And um, that afternoon, that's why the gun was there. That's why the wills. Wow, this, yeah. I spent all day with my dad you know that detail, yep. and I couldn't do it. Oh. I had the gun at the back door because so, my dad was sleeping on the couch. Okay. So what was the plan? You were going to kill your dad? And then, and then my mom would come home oh, and then yeah, kill, her. kill her, and then I would leave. Right. Or, or at that time, I wasn't even sure myself. I would leave and then say robbers came in right. or something like that. So ex tell me, clear me, I'm confused. So, yeah. okay, you, you couldn't do it with your dad and he left to get the car, right? He left, 
he left with my sister's friend, friend right. to come home to okay. get the car. Mm -hmm. And then when my sister came home, we just talked like normal, how her school day went, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. She went downstairs and she sat in the chair beside the TV. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed, and I went downstairs and I was gonna take the gun and put it in the garage because the okay. gun was loaded beside the back door. And that's when uh, the accident happened. And when that happened, I panicked. Right. I didn't know what to do. And I shot my sit. I shot. I go over in my head, and it's like I don't know. I could have phoned nine one one, but I shot my sister in the head. By it was by accident. The, the first. The first shot was by accident. Okay. She gurgled and and basically moaned in in pain. I saw. I came around. I saw the the blood coming out of the side of her head. So she was still alive? She was still alive, but not like, it was like in pain. Mm -hmm. Like I, people would think I was nuts to describe it like this, but mm -hmm. it was like some sort of wounded animal. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm comparing my sister. That's the only right. thing I have to compare it to. So you knew she was seriously injured. Seriously injured, and I just wanted to stop the pain. And, and I shot her again. It certainly explains some stuff. Because I know before yeah. you said that you checked her for breathing, or you yeah. checked her artery or something. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I mean, no, it's a hard I, thing to do, right? No, it's hard I didn't. To check I don't have any. And you didn't call 911. No. But do you think that you kind if you of called 911, do you think maybe she would have survived, maybe? That's you what know. I don't You, you never don't know, know, right? So you just kept like firing at, at her. I kept unloading the gun and, and, and just wanting it to stop. Oh, make just sure wanting it to stop. Over. It's it's done. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. I turned my head. I didn't even look. Like, it, right. I don't, yeah. yeah. been a while since you've been here huh yeah I haven't seen the little rascal nine Mason months. for nine, nine months. months and today's yeah. his birthday well enough and to travel now and I'm excited good You say the time frame for the murder was about an hour, and he is now saying that it was an accident. Do you think it is possible that in that time frame he might actually have uh, killed her by accident? And no, I don't think so. Let's remember that at 4.45 p.m., Mason calls his, his own mother. What he does say to Leslie is, when are you coming home? How soon are you coming home? And, and our position is that that's a very telling piece of information because he's now waiting for his second victim. And that's when he finds out that mom and dad are coming home together and that changes his plans because he cannot shoot two people walking in that door uh, at the same time with a single shot 22 rifle. I'll just get this locked. Here we go, home sweet home. Those are big steps. Yeah. Wrong foot. Oh well. Put you. Right. All right. Yeah. So you want me to go get Mason? When we found out Whew. Boy. that Boy. he had intent to kill us all. That meaning Jennifer, his mother, and his father. It was clear. It was clearer than ever before. Perfect. Do you want to put this back in the corner? There's things that we're going to talk about and um, things that I need to talk about. And 
it's not going to be shocking, I don't think, for me to say that, yes, I did plan to kill you at one point. Hi there. Hello. Hello there. How are you? How are nice you? Nice to see you both. Well, wow, it's good to see you. It's very good to see you. Yeah. And I give you a kiss, but I'm not feeling well. Yeah, you... Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be I'll careful with you around. Good to see you. Good. Good. Put right. on weight for you. Did you? Can... <laughs> You're wobbly. Yeah, I am. I am. How's okay. your sugar oh, good level? Senior. Good. It, good. High, How's actually. Yours? How's uh, your sugar? I don't know. Level? You know, I just got sick, so it's probably low. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. Good to see nice you. For me. Yeah. Okay. Your four knives. Four knives. Everything else. Can you look okay? All my food. Got your foods here. Everything's, Everything's clean. Good? You're good. Thanks. So. All right. All right. All see right. you on Monday. All right. Have a good Monday. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Take bye -bye. care. Bye bye. So. so, here we are. If I'm feeling like this, I don't know if we'll be able to get through all that food this weekend. Well, if you're not feeling good, darn, Ryan will have to do our best. And is it flu symptoms? No. Not really flu, just sick. So what are we going to do with the cake? <laughs> are you going to be able to eat that? I'm sure Dad can help. No. Wow. Chocolate truffle. Do you have any idea why he intended to kill you? There you go. No. Put it in something. No. I haven't got a clue. Put it in. I would come out and and say, "What was in your head? Why on earth you would?" Number one, you killed your sister, and your intention was to kill us too. Why? Why did you have that on your mind? Okay. We were teaser. always there for him. Oh, well, well, Anytime he ran away, or he always came home. It was always returning home. So to destroy the one thing that was closest to him, we have no idea why. Want a pillow? Yeah, we'll get a pillow. It's a lot of work, eh? Yeah. I was hmm. failing at life. I was failing. I didn't feel that I was being successful. Um, I saw all my friends moving on and moving forward. It, it just, I felt like a, a, a failure. And then my parents would say stuff over the phone that would sort of tick me off. And um, it was at that point that I had actually, the thought had entered into my head. Well, one way of, of one way of dealing with the problems is uh, to kill them. I'm not going there. What do you Thanks. tell me? Thanks, Dave. And that would give me the money, and that would give me a fresh start, and that would give me nobody to to question me, nobody to be authoritative, nobody to you could do a um, show. be accountable to. I could just do what, what I wanted. Good. Thank you. And so after I got out of prison, those yeah, thoughts were still there. And so I, I went home, and uh, the whole family was there. Oh. <laughs> it was difficult to is. face them. They all knew that I was in trouble and that I had been in trouble. and. You know, here, and I'm the only one there that's had any problems really with the law. I brought, I brought dice. Did you? So that's one. I didn't dry that out. Those thoughts kept on, they were prevalent and they were up front. And I can feel it for you. It was difficult. Does that feel ache? That's when I started to think about um, the murder of my parents. But it was just going and getting the rifle and going because I knew where it was. Watch your water, Dad. 
Lots of stuff on the table. Hello. Fell back asleep again. We'll have extra. We'll use it for stir fry. How did you know we're having stir fry? I didn't. Okay. Was this shocking news kind of the, so, the elephant in the room that nobody really addressed? Well, it would be the elephant in the room. There's no yeah. doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It's there. Um, he absolutely knows. He made the confession. So he knows and he knows that we will discuss it. There's, there's no doubt about it. That's good. It's never ending. It's never going to end. You know, it won't end. You put something in there, really. Know so it it's how do you how do you deal with it? Mmm, not bad. I think you just go a little on Body blind God. faith. You just go You're with your gut instinct and your love for your children, and you do it. You each you you take a piece each time and say this much I need to know this much I don't need to know. Lo, Mason, do you want some milk with your cake? No milk. No milk for you? No. Do you want some that? It's the way we've handled it all the way along. Is we keep chipping away, chipping away type of thing. So I guess being afraid of of uh, in my case of being afraid of losing the family unit something that you don't want to lose regarding the family unit uh, regardless of the cost and in my heart I want to still continue on with the family such as is so what's the occasion <laughs> For the cake? Yeah. It's Mason's birthday. Yes. And how old would you be today, son? Uh, I don't recall. You don't remember how old you are? Would you be between 31 and 33? That's a, that, that would what's be, that number in between? I would believe that would be 32. 32. Wow. So then what year were you born? This is 2009. 1977. Oh. March 13th. You're improving on your math. <laughs> Some people, as you know, feel that they should have broken with Mason. What do you think? Well, Mason is their son. And like, um, you know, Leslie and Brian have said, you just don't throw your family away. People still shake their heads. Why are you even bothering with your son? Well, all these visits, that's as good as it gets in our life as a, as a family. And those visits are very important as, as families do need to gather strength from somewhat other normal so that's our strength, is, is uh, the three of us getting together regardless of what's happened, but keeping in mind of it, whatever, but trying to enjoy the day, you know, because that's as good, like, that's as good as it gets for us. Oh, here's that tea. What <laughs> kind is it again? It's called... Something, something. They love their son. That's all they have right now. Cheers, Mason. Cheers. It's not that they're not thinking of um, Jennifer. They love Jennifer. They're, they're, Jennifer is in their hearts, you know, like every day. You know, and she's around spiritually, you know. But because she's not here in body, their only child is Mason. And they are a mom and a dad. And 
they still have their mothering and their fathering to do with Mason. Regardless that he's in prison and he's murdered his sister. They have chose to support Mason and they're not going to throw him away. And that's their choice. And people should respect that. Or if, if you don't, then don't say anything at all. Don't be critical. Because you have no idea what you would do if you were in their shoes every day. Well, this is nice. We're happy to be here with you on your birthday. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have been blessed. You have? I have two wonderful parents like you. There you go. What a crock of shit. <laughs> <laughs>